Okay, so let's talk about The Dark Knight Rises ending now. Yes! I love the movie, by the way. I mean, it had its, its problems, but it's okay. I mean, the guy gave us Inception and The Dark Knight and Batman Begins. So, I mean, even if he had made a crappy and a crappy movie, so I would have just gone like, that's okay, man. I'd, I'll still give it a 7 on IMDb, but because it was good, I gave it a 9. Not a 10, but a 9. Because a 10 I gave to Batman Begins in The Dark Knight. This wasn't as good as both of them, but well, it's okay. Average still makes 9.3, which is. Fine. Anyway, so. The Dark Knight Rises ending. Okay, so I was talking to my friend today uh, about the ending, and I told him this theory. Okay, so my theory is that. Because. Okay, how did, how did I theorize? Okay, first. Uh, okay, you should know that I had sort of Google alerts installed on this movie. Yes, I know that's very weird, but I was just so I was waiting so eagerly for this movie. I just wanted to know everything that was going on, like if any new picture or anything. Just, I would just sort of have Google alerts and just keep reading every day about three hours about the movie's production and everything. I just really wanted to know what was going on. So, um, so in one of these articles, and I think I read it on Collider.com, but I'm not very sure. Uh, and they sort of paraphrase what Nolan what Nolan told us. He he said everyone should watch the last 20 minutes of The Dark Knight to get a proper understanding of The Dark Knight Rises. So at first I thought, well, okay, yeah, he's sort of setting up the plot. Basically, I mean, he wants everyone to sort of remember that, yeah. Harvey Dent died and Batman took the fall for him and everything, you know. That was Batman's sort of last sighting as Batman. Batman was Batman, yeah. Bruce Wayne's last sighting. No, yeah, Batman's last sighting as Batman. Anyway, so, yeah, so at first I thought, yeah, okay, so it's a plot, plot thing, you know. He wants everyone to sort of follow quickly. But after watching the movie, which I saw first day, first show in India, and at PVR Rivoli, was it? Yes. Um, doesn't really matter to you guys anyway, but uh, I, 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 after a few days of sort of thinking about the movie, which I'm, I, I tried, I, I tried sleeping, but I just couldn't sleep because I, I was just thinking about the movie so much. But then I sort of, then I re, I recall that article and I recall the ending basically. So. What happened, I I remember the last thing that Batman says in The Dark Knight. Do you remember what he said? Okay, uh, I'll tell you. He said, okay, <clears throat> you'll hunt me, you'll condemn me, and set the dogs on me. Now, here's the tricky part. Then he says, because that's what needs to happen. That's what needs to be done. Because sometimes truth isn't good enough because sometimes people deserve more sometimes people deserve people deserve to have their faith rewarded and he's basically talking about how a lie can be better than the truth and that's what the ending to the dark knight rises was it was a lie it was a complete lie i mean uh, nolan lied to us because that's what we deserved. I mean, we deserve to know that no, Batman isn't dead. I mean, you tell me, wait a second. You tell me, remember there's this one shot of Batman still in the cockpit? Just, I think, uh, five seconds, five seconds to go and he's still inside the cockpit. So, obviously, autopilot, he hasn't taken the autopilot thing, alright? So, <coughs> rude. I'm sorry, I coughed. I hate when that happens. Sorry. Anyway, um, see. Anyway, so he's he's in the cockpit, right? I mean, just five seconds before the blast, and the bomb's obviously just below him because he hasn't dropped it off. I mean, why would he drop it off? I mean, the whole point is just to go get as far uh, away from the coast as possible, right? So obviously he won't drop it off somewhere, and the bat obviously wasn't. A very fast vehicle. That was one problem with the bat. It wasn't a very 
it wasn't like a concord like batwing they used to show I mean it wasn't like a like a, it didn't fly off into the distant lake it was fast probably I mean didn't even break the sound barrier actually so anyway um, so basically he is in the cockpit five seconds before the blast there is no way in hell that he can survive from that then you'll say okay uh, wait a second I'll just read this I wrote this all sort of because this is my first video I wanted everything to be sort of in front of me so that I don't really miss out on anything I uh, oh, wait one second yeah yeah okay five seconds to go and he's still in the cockpit so obviously he is dead now you'd say he's not dead he the movie basically well, finishes with him in Italy sitting with Selena Kyle and Alfred seeing him whatever exactly Alfred it was it was shown to us through Alfred's eyes wasn't it <clears throat> now remember now note that Alfred is probably what an eight year old man and he's just lost the only thing that meant anything to him I mean Bruce Wayne was his only child only connection to the world just as Alfred was Bruce Wayne's only connection to the world I mean even more 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 so for Alfred I mean he lost his only he lost the only person in the world he loved I mean I, I don't think he they show any fa other family members of Alfred do they I mean I didn't spot Alicia Silverstone in the movies yeah so so clearly it's it's quite possible that he's sort of become a little delusional I mean He's still going to the same cafe. I mean, he's obviously read in the papers and everything that Batman obviously gave his life for for the city, but he probably he he maybe he doesn't want to believe that. And at that point, he'd probably just believe anything that suited him, right? And uh, that's why he still went to that cafe, even though he knew that Bruce died, Batman died, but. Uh, he goes to the cafe every day again and he he sees now again they show Bruce Wayne sitting there but that's uh, <coughs> that's through Alfred's eyes you see um, why um, clearly if you, if you see the ending closely uh, they so they see uh, they show Alfred sort of looking in the cameras uh, suddenly and so sort of nodding obviously that, that that's what he would have done to Bruce and in that shot you see a guy wearing something gray so sort of walking by the walking past the frame and suddenly the they take the reverse shot and show Kristen Bale with uh, Anne Hathaway and the same guy sort of uh, walks past so it uh, I mean it, it obviously means I think the only point that that guy was there was to show that yeah you're seeing through Nolan's eyes now uh, Alfred's eyes now sorry not Nolan's eyes you're seeing Bruce Wayne through Alfred's eyes and again he's a delusional man now he will probably believe anything he and he sees Bruce sees someone who he thinks he's Bruce is Bruce and I don't know maybe it gave him that satisfaction that yes Bruce is happy again but that's the lie Nolan has given us. I mean, the whole movie sort of centered around the around one word, hope, and pain, but hope also. Uh, and that scene where they finally show Bruce in the cafe, the cafe scene, and the the autopilot scene with Fox coming to know, getting to know that yeah, he had sort of updated the software and sort of installed whatever the autopilot on the back that's the hope uh, that Nolan has sort of given us that maybe he's still around maybe he's sort of, you know he faked, he faked his death or whatever but he didn't five seconds to go I don't think you can escape death from there but the best part I thought about uh, 
including that autopilot scene was that i i think it sort of made uh, the ending the his death batman's ultimate death even more heroic i thought because even though he had uh, an option of you know just jumping out of the plane and you know letting it fly out into the sea he actually just went with it he he wanted sort of get away from gotham he it's such a symbolic moment that he's he's going away he's going away from gotham the only i mean that gotham is his home sure but again what has gotham given him bad memories horrible terrible memories and nothing but pain i mean the only good things that happened to him with rachel and rachel was taken away from him alfred he by his own stupidity drove away from him uh from himself and <clears throat> so he doesn't really want to go back to gotham he wants to leave and he uh again the coordinates thing that he so this is the part where he suddenly becomes sherlock holmes for i mean really he he had everything planned out he uh, the bat signal sure i mean the, the new bat signal he he gave uh, gordon new bat signal he gave uh, robin john blake the coordinates to the bat cave he had everything planned out he had done everything he knew that he's probably not going to survive this fight with bane which he did but eventually he didn't survive did he so uh, i think he f- foresaw everything <clears throat> and yeah at that point at, at that point where they show him in the cockpit just like 5 seconds to go um that's a beautiful shot by the way and he's just thinking to himself and probably you know thinking about maybe i'm doing the right thing maybe i don't deserve to live maybe but maybe i don't need to be around gotham anymore because you know that thing about batman attracting uh weird you know villains weird type of villains being the joker bane everyone it was basically because bat i mean that idea again that batman actually attracts um all kinds of evil people to gotham so i think he just thought that maybe if i leave maybe if i leave then and gotham is obviously in the right hands now because they've won the war against the terrorists and i think the police also they've uh, i mean they fought like an army right so they they've obviously u- unified all of a sudden and i'm pretty sure once you fight as an army there's no way you can get corrupted from there i mean really when you fought and won a war that is you you don't let that go to waste i mean so um um what else do i want to talk about yeah so basically that's it no light to us he gave us the ending we deserved we deserve to know that batman still out there somewhere and you know just he's alive and well and that's what he gave us through alfred's delusional eyes and but really batman's dead i hate to say that but he is and it's a very clever thing too because no one obviously won't be returning so even if they even if warner brothers sort of uh they decide to sort of pick up from where nolan left off it's not really nolan's fault is it that warner brothers didn't understand nolan's ending nolan's idea it's not his fault he's he's given you the film he made and now he's out he gave you the film he gave you the ending that he killed off batman basically but he gave you that hope so that franchise filling ending you know so um <clears throat> yeah i think that's uh, that, that, that that's probably it and the best part is uh i wanted to sort of tell everyone this uh, because i i didn't really i i've been reading a lot about the ending and you know watching everyone's videos and like jeremy johns and that flickpick guy and 
IGN and all these people I mean all these channels have videos on uh, on the ending uh, analyzing the ending but I, I, I never sort of heard or read this particular point the Dark Knight ending connection in any of their anal analyses so um, yeah I thought this would be pretty cool and nice way to get famous right YouTube uh, I don't know just if you if you have any comments or anything please comment below and comment below let me know and as always if you like to see here and want to see more click right here to see more <laughs> no that's a very Jeremy Johnson that's like a tribute to him he's a very good I love him I love him really I mean I watch I've probably watched 80% of his videos and that's what I've been doing last year year uh, anyway so um yeah, that, that, that's about it. And another thing I, I wanted to talk about was uh, if you've seen the BBC Sherlock series, the ben Benedict Cum uh, Cumberbatch, Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock Holmes series, there's an amazing amount of sort of uh, relation, the connections between the. I mean, you can draw innumerable parallels between the two, between Sherlock and the Dark Knight trilogy, I mean, Batman to Sherlock, Gordon to Lestrade, Alfred to Watson, Catwoman to Irene Adler, uh, the Joker to Moriarty, obviously, I mean, that's a no-brainer, but, I mean, the whole point of him sort of working from outside the system, and even the Batman is sort of, you know, very... Uh, quixotic and you know very idealistic so sure, I mean Sherlock Holmes isn't but I mean when I watched the, uh, the final problem I think the third episode in the Sherlock series uh, from the first season where Moriarty finally comes about comes around and a uh, few pieces of dialogue between Sherlock and Moriarty were like wow that's that's exactly a, the same dialogue that Batman would have a Joker. I mean, that I don't know. There's a very big connection. I'm I'm not sure because I haven't read the Sherlock Holmes series. I've read quite a few of the comics, uh, Batman comics, though. But it's possible that Batman and his surroundings were sort of uh, uh, they were sort of based on the Sherlock Holmes universe. But anyway, that. Uh, another sort of food for thought for you and in case you haven't seen the Sherlock series the new 2010 series you should definitely watch it I think it's probably the greatest thing I've seen brilliant just really good um, so yeah that's about it and if you have any more theories uh, please comment below and make this video popular man I want to be a famous man just so yeah Okay, see you guys. Bye. Bye.